Hello, my name is Len Tyler. Welcome to this video, the first in a series of short videos with ideas and suggestions to help us get music back into preschools and primary schools once the situation improves. Uh, as a disclaimer, of course, these are just suggestions and ideas from myself. It's entirely up to you, the teachers or the schools or the organisation, to decide whether or not to use them. First of all, you need to organise your venue. If you're working in a school or a large organisation, the chances are that the school hall will be available or classrooms. You can also consider outside venues, sports fields, playgrounds. They're all good venues for doing uh, music where you need some extra space. If you are working in the private sector and perhaps hiring halls, it would, might well be worth talking to your hall hirer and asking if they'll help you get re-established by giving you a reduced rent or a rent-free period to get you back up on your feet again. Once you have your venue, you need to get it organised. Of course, you need to sanitise everything, particularly the floor, if it's a hard floor and if you're going to be using uh, the floor for your children to sit on. I would suggest you have the door pegged open and you need to set up a workstation for each individual or each parent and child. I use these. They're called floor spots or sometimes called distancing spots. Uh, they're made of a sort of a plasticky rubber thing. They stick hard to a, a hard surface. They're non-slip and I find them to be ideal. Uh, we use them regularly. You can get them, I think, through an organisation called Maud Sport. That's M-A-U-D-E-S-P-O-R-T. If you Google that, I'm sure you'll find it. You can also get them at other places as well. And you are quite likely to find them in a lot of schools in their as part of their gym equipment. You can, of course, use anything else, either coloured, uh, paper or card, or you could use card with numbers on. If you are going to use that sort of thing, I would suggest that you have them laminated so they can be easily sanitised. The idea here is to be able to have these workstations in such a way that you can organise your class quite easily. I'll show you the first setup that we have. I've set it out here. Uh, I've set it out for 16. You can add or subtract from that, but I'm guessing 16 is likely to be the maximum number of children in a music class in the foreseeable future. If you have smaller groups or a smaller room, just use small, either less colours or less, less um, workstations. This is the first setup. We have a series of 16, four red, four yellow, four green, four blue. This has just been set up to show you the example, the principle. Of course they will be two meters apart, so you will need a much larger room or a lot less floor spots. What you can do then, you can have an activity going on, and if you want to have half of the children doing one and half doing something else, you can just say, okay, let's have the, uh, the red and the yellow sing the song, and the green and blue do an ostinato. That's a nice, easy thing to do. So you can have the two colours on one side doing something and the two colours on the other side doing something else. Or you can mix it, you can have the first and the third colour doing something and the second and fourth doing something else, which makes it a little more challenging. If you're going into that scenario, you need your stronger singers on the edge of the colours and the weaker singers in the middle. So the stronger singers have the challenge of a neighbour singing something different, whereas the uh, the children who need more assistance have people, children either side who are singing the same thing. There's uh, other ways of, of um, setting things up. I'll just change the setup and give you a different version. Now in this second setup, I've rearranged the colours, so instead of being in blocks of four, they're in blocks of two. Set out as such, the same sequence, two red, two yellow, two green, two blue, two red, two yellow, two green, two blue. In this scenario, you can have the red team, the yellow team, the blue team and the green team all doing four different things. And in this scenario, it is much more advanced because every child has someone next to them doing something different. You can again play with the numbers, you can have them singly all the way around, which is even more challenging because each individual will have somebody either side doing something completely different. 
Uh, that gives you the basic setup and some ideas. There will be further videos with songs and specific activities that you can do while avoiding contact. At the end of the lesson, of course, thank your pupils, particularly the children, for the lovely efforts they will have put in. And remind them as they go out to make sure that they do not touch anything, particularly door handles. It's such an obvious and easy thing to do. I hope you found this little video useful. More videos will be coming online very soon uh, with some activities that you can do while social distancing. Good luck, keep happy, keep singing, but most of all, keep safe.